and the number to call is 131332, or you can SMS on 0427 131332, particularly if you want some red tape busted, because it's our red tape uh, busting segment with Shane Bowring. Good morning, Shane. G'day, Chris. How are you? Pretty good, mate. Pretty good. I left you with some homework last week, and apparently you've done it. Well, we've got on to most of it, absolutely. Yep. Uh, the first one was uh, in relation to the junk mail as to whether yep. political parties were exempt. Um, mm-hmm. They're not exempt at all. Um, so everybody has to comply with the junk mail. So if you've got to sign up, no junk mail, they have to. They're, they're not supposed to do it. The Act does say that they won't take action against the state uh, or federal government. So if the state or federal government was involved, well, there's no action. Yeah. They have to comply with the Act, but they won't get fined. But as a per- potential member of Parliament, if you're out there um, you know, putting material in, in a letterbox, yeah. that's right, you can get fined, absolutely. So there's, wow. there's no exemption from what I can see. As I said, I'm not a solicitor, but I can pretty much interpret acts, and, and so, um, yeah, you can get fined. And just to follow up that, I see that energy retailer AGL has been fined 35000 after a uh, salesman ignored a do-not-knock sign. Uh, they got fined 35000 the company who was contracted, uh, CPM, uh, they got fined twenty five thousand, uh, and the maximum penalty is fifty grand. Absolutely, mm. and that was a question that you raised mm. with as to whether people um, can can knock on your the door. Your door, the, the, selling the, stuff. Yep, uh, under the A Triple C, if you've got a do not knock a sign on on your gate or on your door, you're not allowed in. Uh, if you're a business selling, all right. So only if you're a business selling. So if you're a religious institution, political, you know, p- potential mm. p- politician, you can go in because that's not against the law. But as a business, you cannot go in, and and, and there are some serious um, fines in relation to that. Mm-hmm. So yeah, so that was interesting. Absolutely. Any, any other successes? Yeah. Well, well, what we had was remember the coin machine, yes, right? Where the, yeah. the coin counting machine with the bank was out. Yeah, yeah, that's right. And, and I said I'd, I'd verify whether that needed to be calibrated or not. Well, the Weights and Measures Department, it's a federal government responsibility now. We've had them ducking and weaving all week as to whether they have to be calibrated or not. One guy said to me, oh, he didn't think so, he wasn't sure, don't know. Mm. Um, then I end up um, sending an email off to, to Weights and Measures and saying, hey, you know, you people need to, to check this out. They're going to get back to me. So at the moment, we've got them on the hop. They don't really know whether the bank machines need to be certified or need or, or, or to a standard or not. They say that they don't believe so, but as I've said to them, well, if they don't, I want to know where in the Act there is an exemption or where in the regulations there is an exemption. So we're still waiting to see about that. So, so yeah. So well, I think it's important. Why, why shouldn't they be calibrated like a weights and measuring well, machine? Well, what they're saying is that the machines don't weigh, but I was of the understanding that when you put the bags of money together, the 10, 20 cent pieces or whatever it is, that the machine then weighed that. They didn't then tip that into the coin counted account that it actually you weighed, weighed it, it yeah. because that's how they verified. That's why you've got them in the bags because they don't have to count them. So to me, that then should come under weights and measures. And as I said, I've got them on the hop. They're unsure. <laughs> we'll get hopefully get an answer by next week. So that was the homework all finished. Okay. And one of the past issues you've been chasing was uh, the Mount Gravatt Pony Club. Yeah, um, this was an issue that um, listeners of Mornings might remember, that um, ages ago they lost their, their, their grounds because of a developer essentially owned them. So the developers come on board and said, well, look, you know, we need to develop these grounds now. So they were essentially going to be homeless. They looked like they were going to have to fold. Um, with my help, we've lobbied the state and, uh, council, uh, state government and the local Brisbane City Council. We eventually, after much chagrin, found um, a new um, uh, area for them where they can operate. So we've got them that, and that, that's been resolved for some period of time. But the good news now is that we've actually got them $5,000 in equipment. It's only five grand so far, and we're actually chasing a number of other grants for them to, to get them up to speed for their clubhouse and for their jumps and things. But we started, we've got them five grand towards getting them reset up on their new new ground. So mm-hmm. that's a great result. Fantastic. Yeah, that's fantastic. That's and, and look, I know a lot of organisations are getting in specialists who can write yep. for grants, yep. uh, who, who are familiar with the application yep. process. And, and we work for some of the biggest non-profits in Queensland and, and, and we work for some of the smaller. So we work for local darts club all the way up to you know some of the, the, the major non-profits. 
And um, I think uh, since since we've started in 2000, I think we're up to about 80 or 90 million that we've won our clients now over that period of time. So, and it is really important because the state government's cut back on a lot of funding for non-profits, mm-hmm. which has left them without funding opportunities. And, and look, uh, I'm not sitting here today saying that it's rocket science that you have to engage somebody like us because there might be people in your organisation who can do it, but really it is a bit specialised. You've got to know the language. You've got to know where the grants are. You've got to match your projects to the grant opportunities. And so, yeah, people do engage people like us. So, um, yeah, so anyway, Mount Gravatt Pony Club, five grand, we're off and running. How can people get in contact with you, just on that note, if they were chasing those sort of things? And you need to know the buzzwords. You need to know how to pitch it, don't you? Absolutely. Redtapebusters.com is our website. And, and look, we initially started as lobbyists um, Mm. 13 years ago, and and we still lobby for people, and this is part of our lobbying process. But grants and tenders are our most important thing. That's what we're really specialising now. And, yeah, it is important that... um, a lot of non-profits and even businesses don't realise that there are funding opportunities out there for them. And if they did, there is money there that can be got, but you've got to have the right story. Mm. You've got to be able to pitch the right proposal. 13 13 32 is the number to call if you'd like to uh, join Shane and I. Of course, Shane will be uh, busting some red tape for you if you uh, have a query, uh, like we did last week with that coin machine. There are always interesting uh, areas that you need to... To update people, uh, and you know, you you chase down people, you you put them on alert. Even if you don't get the answer immediately, you put them on alert. Let's go through some more of the things that you have had success with. Uh, what about the Queensland Security Solutions? Yeah, they're one of they're my sponsor actually yep. on, on mornings. Yeah. Um, and, and they engaged us and asked us to to write some tenders for them for to access some security contracts with councils and government departments. And um, initially we we didn't have a lot of success because their pricing was out. They they were just too dear Mm -hmm. in the marketplace. They've refined their pricing now. Now match that up with our great documents and we've won them a tender with um, one of the local councils for about half a million bucks. Fantastic. So, you know, and and that's, again, I need to stress this isn't about, you know, us doing this as a business. What I'm trying to say to businesses out there are there are many opportunities, like we talked about last week, um, uh, for, for businesses to access contracts and work through council and state government departments and even commercial enterprises. There are tenders out there that you can win. You have to have the right documents, obviously, and tell the right story. But if you price yourself right, there is loads of stuff. And, and, and you know, um, so, so businesses can expand based on getting work through local councils. And, Shane, last week we discussed, uh, you know, a bit of a call on... Uh, governments of all, all levels to um, give a priority to local businesses if they're within the ballpark, within a certain uh, percentage 5%, of I yeah, five percent. We said yep. Yep. Uh, of an overseas tender. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Or, and, or and an, in, in, in the state. That's right. And, and you know what I'm actually going to do is uh, you know, I'm going to write something to the premier with this as a suggestion. Look, you know, he might take no notice whatsoever. Who knows? But look, I think it's really important. As I said last week, I firmly believe that our state government and our councils need to be buying local, need to be, and that's how the economy is going to start getting moving. And look, that doesn't go against the, the, the principles of merit and equity at all because they've still got to be a good business and they've still got to have a track record. But I just believe if they're close on price, we should be giving them the job. Yeah, uh, look after your own. Absolutely. Your own backyard. Why, why look after someone from interstate? Like, you know, they, they don't look after us, so let's look after our own. All right, we'll take a break, Shane, and we'll be back with more. And if you'd like to join the conversation, the number to call 13 13 32. Hi, this is Danny, one of the producers of the 4BC Breakfast Show. Thanks so much for your support, calls and feedback this year. I wish you and your loved ones a wonderful Christmas and I look forward to hopefully bringing you some great radio in 2014. Merry Christmas from our family to yours. News Talk 4BC. How did we find out about the bump shop? By accident, literally. So you'd had a pretty bad crash. Hey, it wasn't my fault. Anyway, heaps of our friends recommended the bump shop for the repairs. The bump shop team are master smash repairers who do everything in such meticulous detail that our car came out better than before the accident. It looked fantastic and the colour matching was perfect. Believe me, if you really care about the finish of your car and need quick repairs to the high standard, go with the master smash repairer. The bump shop, Eagle Farm. Phone 3268 4900. All insurance companies welcome. 
For the ones you love this Christmas, visit Saturday for two albums for $40. There's One Direction Midnight Memories, Pink, Live from Melbourne DVD, and Human Nature, the Christmas album. Choose any two for $40. Or how about Jessica Malvoy, Beautiful, and Dami Im? Choose any two for $40. There's also Miley Cyrus, Bangers, and Little Mix, Salute. Two albums for $40. With heaps more to choose from, from in-store or online at sanity.com.au. Saturday, great service, great value. You can have your new leather lounge in time for Christmas. And in the Simply Sofas pre-Christmas sale, you'll save 30% off the recommended retail price. A stylish three-seater and two-seater all-leather sofa is just $1,550. Two two two-seaters are an incredible $1,360. And a single leather recliner is an unbelievable $490. They're Brisbane's lowest-priced all-leather sofas, guaranteed. Simply Sofas, next to the Cheesecake Shop on Moggle Road in Drapilli. If you're looking to surprise someone with a special gift this Christmas, rush to Val Ray Jewelers, George Street, where hundreds of quality items are half price. Diamonds, watches, gold, and so much more, half price. You'll be sure to find some great gifts for Christmas. A watch for him, diamonds for her, at half price. Get in now to Val Ray's George Street before Christmas for unbelievable prices on quality stock. Val Ray Jewelers, George Street, Brisbane. The Tony Barlow Christmas Sale of the Century is on now. With all stock reduced from 20 to 80% off. Designer suits from a low 99. Designer shirts from just 39. Italian silk ties starting at 19. Hurry in and get your post-Christmas savings now. All stock price to clear, no exceptions. The Tony Barlow Christmas Sale of the Century. With up to 80% off. Only at 189 Elizabeth Street opposite the Hilton Hotel. And remember our four hours free parking at 140. 40 Elizabeth Street. Conditions apply. Brisbane. Brisbane's Big Backyard with Chris Bombalus. And we are red tape busting with Shane Bowering. And uh, Shane, you've got some more uh, listener success. Uh, this one's about uh, accessing superannuation. Yeah, we had a listener contact me. This was probably a couple of months ago now about could they access their superannuation early. Now, you can. It's very difficult, um, but you can. And there's got to be some specific question, um, circumstances. It could be that, you know, significant financial hardship where the house is just about to go under. Yep. You owe money on your mortgage. You might be able to access it for that. For um, terminal uh, medical costs, if you've got a terminal uh, health issue, there, there's money there that you might be able to access for that. If you've got a permanent disability or one of your siblings has got a permanent disability and you need to get the house modified, there could be dollars there. And obviously, if you're just stressed financially that you've got not a dollar in the bank, there's prospects. You have to apply to APRA and you have to make an application to your superannuation um, company um, to get this. But yeah, in the end, um, after my advice, they were able to get some dollars for some health issues Mm -hmm. and to get them back financially a little bit more stable. So yeah, and on our website, we've got fact sheets on redtapebusters.com, fact sheets. There is a fact sheet there about accessing your super early, as well as a heap of other fact sheets. So look, if you've got some, some concerns and you need to try and access that super, you've got to have a really good case. They're just not going to give it just because you know, you're doing it a bit tough at this point in time. But get on the APRA website and get on our fact sheet, and that will give you the idea as to what are the things that they would consider. Now, you had uh, Jeff call us in last week with a youth allowance dispute. Yep. If listeners remember, um, last week Jeff called in, and um, he was um, uh, his, his uh, siblings were, were trying to access some um, youth allowance. Yes. And um, I think it was his daughters, actually. And he'd been knocked back because he hadn't pr- provided his tax return, and he'd given an estimate, and he'd contacted George Brandis, and he contacted his local member and got nowhere. Um, and I said, look, just hang fire for George Brandis because it does take time to go through the works. Well, I made a few calls myself. We made a few representations. And funnily enough, um, they've now accepted um, his um, estimated income. The uh, uh, youth allowance is now being paid, so the issue is all resolved. And that just reinforces that. Don't take no for an answer. Stand up. If you believe that you've been done wrong or that you deserve something, stand up and be counted. And in a lot of times, if you stay the course, you'll get the outcome Keep that you're after. Away. Absolutely.
And what about Nigel? Yeah, Nigel. Nigel was an interesting one. He hadn't got his bond refunded. There was a whole heap of issues about um, um, why they weren't going to refund the bond. The blinds were this. The, you know, the lawn was such and such. And look, I, I gave him some advice, and then I also made some representations to the Rental Bond Authority, and we got that sorted out. He's got all of his bond back now as well. So it's been a big week this week. And uh, you might have some more problems to solve because uh, Rhonda has joined us. Good morning, Rhonda. Good morning, Chris. Good morning, Shane. Good day, Rhonda. How are you? Oh, I hope I'm going to be better after this. <laughs> oh, good. What's what's your problem? Um, Shane, pre-cyclone Yassi up here in um, north, I had a plumber drainer clean and seal off parts of my roof where birds were nesting. Yes. Post Yassi, I became aware that the minor birds were getting back in there. Now, because I was having work done by um, uh, contractors and build whatever, I asked them to check that roof again for yes. relevance to the cyclone damage. It went on and on and I wasn't able to get it done and it, it eventually I had bird life come through the house. Well, I was absolutely so distraught and I had proof of this from the fumigation company. Yep. They gave a report to the Stephanie Bird Life and they fumigated it all out and I had to move out, etc. Now, I asked the insurance company, I got angry with them and got back to them about it and they sent out their preferred builder. Yes. He went up onto the roof and I actually watched him wrench part of the roof up where I'd had it fixed his prior, popped the nails, took photos. Anyway, the long and the short of that was when he finished, he informed me that I had to get a whole new roof and I just about collapsed. I'm 68 on a pension. Yes. And I said, look, I'm sorry, you know, that's going to be $10,000. He said, oh, no. He said, even with us, he said it'd be over 15000 so then I heard back from the insurance company and they said, look, we've got these shocking photos. Your roof is in such a bad way. You need to have a whole new roof. I said, well, it's not under insurance. And she said, no. And I knew I was coming up for renewal on insurance. And I said, well, look, what's going to happen with this? And she said, oh, well, she said, unless you get a new roof, we won't reinsure you. Mm, look, this doesn't sound good at all. So what I would be suggesting is to get a um, independent specialist out after them if you haven't done it already. I did. Get, okay, and they wrote a report and, and, and that conflicted with the insurance company's report, I hope? Definitely. This person was a registered licensed plumber, drainer, gas yes. fitter. Yep. And his report actually said, roof sheeting in excellent condition with no rust. I know that there's some rust on, rust on the ridge capping and I was going to get that done anyway. Yes. But when I shared this with the uh, case manager that I was given them from the insurance, she said they would not accept work from handymen. Okay, well, what, what I think is if you contact me off air, yes. what we'll do is um, I'll make some, um, some correspondence and, and, and you know, discussions with the insurance company themselves. I'll also talk to the insurance council and see if we can't get some action where we can get you know, somebody else to look at this to maybe get them to see light and, and, and you know, to come to the party on your behalf. Eh? So if you can email me off air, that would be great. Thanks to Rhonda. We'll get your details, uh, or if you want to go back to switch, let's go quickly to Richard. He has a problem up in North Queensland. G'day, Richard. How are you? Yes, good morning, Shane. Yeah. Um, you're very good at what you do. I, I'm, I'm not sure if this is in your area of expertise, but you are talking about business for Queensland. Yes, mate, local. absolutely. Um, months ago, perhaps early in the year, there was a contract I tend to put out to many companies regarding a billion-dollar billion, billion dollar contract up in North Queensland. Yes. In fact, it was billions. Boxside. Yes. And it came down to two final tenders who who uh, uh, they had to decide on. One was a, a Singapore-based company, and the other one was an Australian-based company. Yes. I've never heard anything more about it. And I actually left a, 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 a query with uh, Gary there to ask the premier when he came into his into his office there. Yes. But I've, I've never heard anything about it. Mate, so. Send, so get on my website, redtapebusters.com. Send me an email. And I'll, I'll post something to the Premier and see if... Um, and, look, the Premier's office is generally really good. They get back to us. So, yeah. look, so send me something, and I'll see if I can follow up and get you an answer, eh? Right. The, the only thing that I, I, I did see uh, published was... Uh, or was on the radio, I think. There was a bauxite contra, uh, section up on the, the, you know, on the Cape, uh, Cape of Carpentaria there. Yes. And it was something to do with uh, uh, preservation of land for uh, Aboriginals and so forth. It was only partial. There, there could be some um, circumstances that have prevented it being awarded or it might have already been awarded. But yeah. send me that email, hey, off my website, and we'll chase the Premier up and see if we can get an answer. 
All right. Thank you, Richard. And maybe quickly we'll go to Steve. Steve, we're heading up towards the news, so if you can ask Shane quickly, that would be great. Yeah, just to let you know that I had the ex- I got permission to access my superannuation for medical reasons, and I got taxed at 37% on it. It does. That That is the extra consideration that people yeah. need to be aware of. But at yeah. least there is money there if you've got the right circumstances yeah. that but you can access in an emergency. I, was going to ask you about, I also have accident and sickness cover. Yes. So when I was, I was off work for quite a while, my insurance cover, my insurance company wouldn't pay me out on my policy because my company was paying my wages. Oh, okay. Well, that's very but strange. But I thought insurance, insurance is insurance. Yeah, I, I would if, have, I, if, I, if I choose to have extra protection, I should get paid for the relevant, you know? I would have thought so too. Me. Send, send me an email off, the, off my website and I'll see if I can look into it for you. Appreciate that. Thanks very much. My pleasure, mate. Thank you. Thanks very much, Shane. You've got a bit of homework again this week. That's fantastic. We'll be busy, so um, that's good. And if we can have a heap more successes like we did this week, that's great. Oh, I like it when you come back with uh, good news stories. And again, one more time, if people want to get uh, some red uh, tape busting action uh, with you and your organisation, what are the details they need to do? Redtapebusters.com. They just get on there. They send us a message. We've got um, uh, uh, fact sheets on there. There's newsletters. There's uh, up-to-date news of different things that are happening. So contact us and, and we'll see what we can do. Thanks very much, Shane. Look forward to catching up with you same time next week. Good